And the last thing that I want to demonstrate in this program is how we can use the statements break and continue inside of a loop. Let's start with the break statement because we've seen that one before. So the break statement is used to get out of a section of our program and continue on with the next section. We saw it in the switch statement because we would use it at the end of one of our cases to get out of our switch statement. And as soon as we hit the line that said break, we completely got out of switch and we no longer looked at the different cases. With our loop, it's going to work similarly. As soon as we see the word break, we're going to immediately exit the loop. So we may have some situations where if we have a particular value, we want to exit the loop. And here is an example. In this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add numbers until the user enters negative one. So I don't know how many numbers the user will enter. And because I don't know the quantity, I'm going to choose a while loop. There are ways I could make this work in a for loop, but a while loop might be the better choice here. I don't know how many are going to be entered, so I'm going to create a variable called count to keep track of how many were entered. And then I'll have a total so that I can create a running total or a running sum. And then in my while loop, my test condition is the keyword true. And so this is an example of something that would be an infinite loop if I didn't break out of it. There is no way this loop will ever have a test condition that evaluates to false. So I have to have some other way to get out of this loop. That's where break will come in. I'm going to begin by displaying a prompt on the screen. I want my user to enter a number or if they're finished entering numbers, enter a negative one to quit. Sometimes you'll see that called a sentinel. It's a special value that tells us the user is finished. I'll get the number from the user and as soon as I do, I need to test that number to see if it is the sentinel value. And so if the number were negative one, and I need to be careful and use my double equal operator here, I am completely finished getting numbers from the user. In fact, I don't even want to process this particular number. So I'm going to break and completely exit that loop. When I do hit the break, I will no longer execute any lines of code in this loop and I'll go to the next statement after the loop. But if the number had not been a negative one, I'm going to add that number to my accumulator variable, which there's a typo there that should have said total since I have total up at the top. But nonetheless, you can see that I'm adding it to my accumulator variable and then I'm going to increment my count. When we do have the value negative one, we don't want to add that to our accumulator variable and we don't want to increment count. So that's a break. Break gets us completely out of the loop. A continue is a similar statement, but not quite as drastic. And with continue, we're going to stop the current loop iteration, but we're going to let the loop continue. We're just not going to execute any more lines of code for this particular iteration. So we'll just go back up to the top, go to the next iteration. And as an example, if I wanted to get five numbers between one and 10, I have a variable count for the number of variables that I've entered so far. So I can keep track of the quantity and I have some as my accumulator variable. Now, as long as my count is less than five, I want to execute this loop. And I'm going to ask the user for a number between 1 and 10 and immediately get that value from the user. I'll test the number to see if it is a valid value. 
Is it? And if it's less than one or greater than 10, that's invalid. I'm going to display invalid entry and then I'm going to issue the continue statement. That continue statement is going to immediately go back up to the top of the while loop where I'll ask the user to enter a number again. If the number were valid, then I'll add it to the sum and I'll increment count. And so this is a case where I can't use an iterator variable in my for loop because I don't want to increment count unless I had a valid entry. And with a lot of these loops, there's different ways we can write them that will accomplish the same thing. And sometimes we might favor one solution over another, depending on what we're trying to do. So let's see an example of this in our program. So back in our program, I'm now going to use another loop to get a series of numbers from the user, but I don't know how many numbers they're going to enter this time. And I'll continue to accept numbers until negative one is entered, my sentinel value, and then I'll break out of my loop. I'm going to need one additional variable for this because I need to count how many numbers have been entered and I don't have a variable for that right now. So let's add another integer called count and I'll go ahead and initialize that to zero while I'm at it. All right, I'm going to come down to the bottom of the program and we're going to add numbers until negative one is break. All right, so in this scenario, I need to reinitialize some back to zero because I don't want to include any other values that we had. If I wanted to, I could also set count to zero. That will work fine. And then we're going to create our infinite while loop. I'm going to say while and true. And sometimes people will create a while loop this way because they want to use something in the body of the loop to control when the loop ends instead of using the test condition. I'll prompt the user for a number. And let them know if they enter the value negative one, that means they want to quit. Now, when I do something like this, it needs to be a situation where negative one is never a valid number, or I need to pick a different number that is never valid for the types of numbers that are being entered. Maybe it's a quantity of something. I'll follow that up by a CN to get the number from the user. And now we have to test it. Did they enter a number that we want to use, or have they entered a negative one because they want to quit? Well, I'm going to say if number equal equal negative one. This is my situation where the user's entered the sentinel value and I want to quit. I want to get out of the loop. Well, I'm going to press enter and I'm just going to simply put the break statement. If that break statement is executed, this loop will end and no more iterations will happen. But if the number was a number we want, then we're going to add that to our sum by using the combined operator to add number to sum. And I'm also going to increment my count because if I were to average these numbers, I would want to know how many numbers were entered. Once the while loop is finished, I can go ahead and show the sum on the screen. And in fact, I see up here on line 32, it does exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to copy line 32 and paste it on line 47. Now I'm wanting to wait until my while loop is finished to display the sum because I don't want to see the sum until I'm completely finished with the loop. And I'm also going to echo the number of numbers that were entered. All right, 
So let's test this program. Come up to here to debug and start without debugging or control F5. All right, and there is my number entry from when I was using user validation. And I'll just continue with this. All right, here's the part where I'm looking for. Enter a number or negative one to quit. So I can just start entering a bunch of numbers. Doesn't matter, it's gonna go on and on and on. And now that I'm finished entering numbers, I'm going to enter negative one. And I'll see that the sum of those numbers is 52 and the count is 11. Now if I look here and double check how many numbers did I enter, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 numbers until I entered the negative 1. So 11 looks like the correct count for this. And I'm going to assume 52 is the correct sum. And now the last thing we're going to put in this program is an example of using the continue statement. In this case, I'm going to use continue with my number entry so that if the user doesn't enter a number that I like, I don't want to add it to the sum or increment my count. Instead, I want to return to the top of the loop. Let's go ahead and reinitialize count and sum to zero so that we aren't using the values that we had from the last loop. And this time I'm going to execute this loop five times. I could have set it up like I did last time where I execute it until I have a sentinel value, but I'll keep this one simple. I'll just execute it five times. And we're going to ask for a number between one and 10. I'll get the number from the user and now I'm going to test it to see if it's a valid number. If it is invalid, I don't want to process that number. I'll go back up to the top of my while loop. So let's put in our test here and use an if statement to see if the number that's entered is outside of the bounds. So if the number were less than one, or the number were greater than 10. And remember, you need a complete expression on either side of the or symbol. Then I'm going to say C out invalid entry. And then I want to continue. And what continue will do is it's not going to get out of the loop. It's just going to go immediately back up to the top of the loop and it won't execute any more statements in the loop body. Once the if statement is finished, I know that I have a valid number if I'm not back up at the top of the loop. And so I can add that number to my sum. Uh, number and increment count. I don't want to increment count if I didn't have a valid number. So let's test this program change. I'll have to go through the other parts of the program that we had already written. So I will go through those here. All right, and here I am at the new part of the program where I want to enter a number between one and 10. So I'm gonna start out by entering 99. That was not valid. Now I'll enter a five, that was valid. I'll enter a four, three, two, negative 77, that's not valid, and a one. All right, and so now that I have entered five valid numbers, that loop ends. I can't really see what the total was or the count, 
So I probably ought to go back and change that part of the program to echo those values back to me. It'll help me know if it's working like I want it to work. So up there with the break statement, I had a sum and a count on lines 48 and 49. Those look like great things to print out. I'm going to copy 48 and 49. We're going to put it at the end of this while loop. Doesn't do a lot of good in add up numbers if we can't really see what they totaled to. And now I'll retest that program. All right, and I'm going to end or 99 again. That is invalid. I'll do 5, 4, 3, 2, negative 77, and 1. That tells me that my sum was 15. So it looks like it did not add either the 99 or the negative 77 to the sum. And the count is five. And that shows me also that those invalid entries were not counted when the loop executed. Let's go back to our program code. And so what's happening here is whenever we have an invalid entry, we execute this continue statement line 59 then jumps back up to 54 we go back into the while loop get another number from the user if we had a valid number we don't execute the continue statement we execute the sum and the count modifications so we'll either issue the continue statement go back to the loop or we'll process the number by adding it to sum and incrementing our count variable. So let's summarize the difference in break and continue. Break is going to get completely out of the loop. We won't iterate the loop any more times. We're finished with the loop completely. As soon as we execute break, we will jump down to line 48 and display the sum. Whereas with the continue, we don't get out of the loop. We just finish up that current iteration and then go back up to line 54 to see if we should execute the loop again.